بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد. The question arose about what happens for the tahiyat al-masjid. That we, you pray the rakatin when you come in the masjid. So never sit when you go in the masjid, even if it's Jumu'ah, because the Prophet Sallallahu admonished someone during the khutbah. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the man to make uh, the rakatin during the khutbah. So even if you come in late for Jumu'ah, pray your rakatin before you sit. Anytime you're going to sit in the masjid. If you're not going to sit, you just come in the masjid, and you and their imams praying, you just pray with the imam, and you don't have to make tahiyyat to the masjid. This is if you are going to to sit. Maybe you're going to sit for a dars in el. You're going to sit for the halakat of Quran. You're going to read the Quran in the masjid. Whatever, whatever reason you're going to sit and stay in the masjid, sitting in the masjid, then before you sit, you make the rakatain. Uh, on Abi Qatada, Harith ibn Rabi'i al Ansari, رضي الله تعالى عنه. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل أحدكم المسجد فلا يجلس فلا فلا يجلس حتى يصلي ركعتين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يرحمه الله said in the hadith of Abi Qatada رضي الله تعالى عنه he said the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said if one of you enters the masjid do not sit until he prays two rakat he prays ركعتين. Now, Ahabitafillah, this means that before you sit, you pray rakatain. Okay, you pay two units of prayer. That uh, the scholars differ, but most of the scholars say it's not an obligation, it's not wajib. The Prophet ﷺ ordered it. So, and we know the asl al amri fi the wujub that when a command from the Quran or the Sunnah comes, that it's an obligation. Unless there's some other delil from the Quran and the Sun and or the Sunnah to show that it's not obligation that it is mustahab. Now, with this, the ulama, most of the ulama, they say that it's not wajib, but you should do that. You should pray this rakatain. Now, what does that mean if you just so if you're not going to sit, you don't have to pray that rakatain. Okay, but maybe you're waiting for the imam and it's coming. It's just. Prayers in just five minutes, and you feel like standing uh, because maybe it's a time when salat is prohibited. Because there are times when salat is makru, and and you sh you cannot pray in the masjid. There are times when you cannot pray in your house. Even there are certain times, and we'll talk about that another time. When the, in the day, the Prophet said it's prohibited. Like after fajr, you cannot pray until the sun rises. You can't pray. After Fajr. After you pray the Fajr prayer, you cannot pray more prayer. You know? Or something like this. After you prayed your Wajr. Okay? So, anyhow, when you come in, if you're going to sit, you pray this Rakatain. But what if the Imam is praying and you want to pray this Rakatain? You come in the Masjid. Then it is Haram. You cannot go in. Some people, they do. But it may be a certain Medheb, because I think maybe... And Allah knows best, but I see a lot of people who are Hanafi in their madhab that they will go and they will pray when the Imam is praying. But this is not permissible. And this is not what the Dalil shows us from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. So we're not going to take away from our brothers if they have some Dalil, but we won't need to see the Dalil, so maybe it's an issue we need to look at. But the Dalil shows us. Uh, just to, just to understand their opinion. That's only for understanding it. But we know the strongest delil by far, and uh, is that when the imam is praying, you join the imam. You cannot come in the masjid and then pray by yourself and then try to catch the imam. You must join the imam. So if that issue comes up, then that's what you should do. And we ask of all the uh, go ahead. Okay, there's five minutes, so I'm not gonna sit. I'm leaving, but I'm still waiting for Imam to come. Do I, um, do I pray the Rakaatin then? You can, for the Ajir. But some of the ulama, they differ if it's a time when the Salat is uh, prohibited. If it's a time when there's a Nahi on the, on, on the time. For example, you're right before Maghrib. They haven't made the Adhan for Maghrib. Because between Asr and Maghrib, is one of the prohibited times for Salat. You, can, you cannot pray. 
because the shaitan, uh, anyway, the, the, there's an authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which mentioned that this is a time that is prohibited. So you cannot pray. So what some of the Salaf used to do and some of the people do is that they come, if they're, especially if they're going to, if there's only a few minutes of the prayer, what I will do, if it's like five minutes, sometimes I will just stand and wait. But sometimes, instead of standing, I will pray the Rakatayn. And the scholars also differ with regards to this, that, that this, they, they say, Salat al -asbab. There are some prayers that you can pray anytime. For example, if you have to pray istikhara about something, you can pray it in that prohibited time. If you have to pray, of course, janazah, salat janazah, you pray it, even if it's a prohibited time. If you pray, and even they say with the, the, the this rakatain, that if you are coming to make tahiyyat al masjid, that you can pray that during the prohibited time. Okay? So then there's no problem. Probably it's better, and Allah knows best, to pray those rakatain, even at the time of nahi, pray it. And, and then wait with the, for the Imam and wait for the time to come in for Salat or what have you. Now, What if after the Imam finishes praying and then you come in the masjid, do you have to pray? So then pray the Salat? If the Imam comes in? No, huh? well, they finish praying Maghrib. Ayo. And you come to the masjid and then do you have to pray so then, then and then pray Maghrib? No. If you haven't prayed your maghrib because the time is short, you should pray pray your pray the wajib, and then you make qada, you make up your sunnas. After. Yeah, because you should always pray. For example, if you you didn't pray your sunnas of fajr, and the Prophet ﷺ never left his sunnah of fajr, so that's a very important sunnah to get the rakatain of fajr. The the Prophet ﷺ said. Uh, Rakatay al Fajr, Khairan min al Dunya wa ma fiha. He said the, the, the two units of uh, a Fajr prayer, meaning the, the extra ones, the Nawafil, is better than the Dunya and what the Dunya contains, everything in the world. So, if you come in the Masjid and you know, the Imam is praying, of course you join the Imam. If the Imam is finished praying and you, you're going to pray your Fajr, you missed it with the Imam. You pray your pray your 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 Fajr prayer, and then you can pray your Rakatain after that, because it's such an important one. But if you're afraid that the time is going out, then you can delay that your Rakatain, the the extra one, the Sunnah one. You can pray that after during the time of Salat al Duha or something like this. And another issue is you don't want to get in the habit of, of making your sunnahs after. If it's a sunnah that comes before, you don't want to get in the habit of making it after unless it's something you absolutely can't help. So meaning that if you miss, sometimes what happens is brothers, they go to the masjid and they want to pray. They never miss their sunnah of fajr. But then they end up three days, because they came late, Three days in a row they pray the sunnah of Fajr after. Will the ulama say no? If it happens one time and it happens this occasional time, okay. But if it happens, it becomes a regular habit, no, you don't want to pray it until uh, after, you know, when Salat al Doha during this time, you make a qada for it. So we want to be careful of making a bid'ah and uh, praying something out of its time. But sometimes what happens, for example, my situation at work, and maybe someone else will benefit from this, because we work and we don't finish till 1230, that's when we pray. And Dhuhr has already come in. And the Jama'ah is usually always they establish. Guys come out and they pray. So then I, I, you know, we join the prayer. So I have to pray all my sunnahs every day. My sunnahs that usually are supposed to come before Dhuhr, I pray them all every day. I have to make them up after Dhuhr because I'm catching the Jama'ah. I wouldn't come and just pray my Sunnahs and they're having a Jama'ah and I miss the Jama'ah. But instead I join the Jama'ah and then I make it up afterwards. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good. Anything I said was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi Muhammad.